Now, Gloria asked, if the employees work for different departments, their total monthly sales should be reported under the department that they belong to. How do I do that? Well, if you have a lookup table with employees that lists the department they belong to, and you have your sales data with employee and date, that means we need to create a report with three conditions, employee, department, and month. Now I want to show you three different ways to do this. We're going to see how to do it with the new lookup function XLOOKUP. And we'll use Microsoft 365. Then we're going to see how to use relationships. And this will work in any version, Excel 2016 and later. And then we want to do old school with VLOOKUP. And I want to show you in this last example what I think is the number one pivot table trick ever. All right, here's our lookup table. Here's our sales table. In order to create a report from this one table, we need to look up department. So in the top cell, I'm going to use the new lookup function, XLOOKUP. Now in the old days, we would select a single cell, put in the rest, and copy the formula down. But in Microsoft 365, we can just tell the function to look up all employees simultaneously. So I'm going to Control Shift Down Arrow to highlight all the way down almost 70,000 rows. Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell. Comma. Look up array. We need to find a match for the employee. Comma. Return array. This is what we're trying to go and look up. When I close parentheses, notice I didn't have to lock any of these ranges over here. And when I hit Enter, all the results spill down the column, thus not requiring that I copy the formula down. Now if you look up into the formula bar, you can see all of the cells below the top cell are grayed out. The formula only lives in the top cell. Not only that, but if this was an Excel table, spilled formulas like this would not work. And that's because the Excel table feature has its own mechanism to automatically copy formulas down. Now I click in a single cell, and we'll create our pivot table report, insert, pivot table, or we can use the keyboard, Alt-N-V-T. I want to put this on the existing sheet. Let's say G2, click OK. Now when I drag date down to rows, it'll automatically group. If that didn't group, then you have to manually group it. Now I don't want quarters, so I'm going to drag that off. I don't want date. I want years over in the columns. And now we see our report starting to emerge. Now we need department, so we drag that down below months. Just to see, we can right click, expand collapse, expand entire field. Looking good so far, but now we need the employee to be in the right department. So now we drag it down below department. And just like that, for January, there are the departments. Here are the employees. Now we can drag sales down to values. Right click somewhere in the values area, number formatting. And we'll do number, show a comma. And I think I'll make it less cluttered by showing zero decimals. Click OK. And there, we're done. Now another way to do this, which will avoid 70,000 new formulas in the worksheet, is to use relationships. So let's click on the sheet Relationships. Now if you've never used relationships, it's similar to a lookup formula. Whereas we had to create a department column and pull the department over here, with relationships, we tell Excel, hey, connect employee with employees. And then in the pivot table field list, we'll see both tables, and we're allowed to drag fields from either table. Now, in order to get relationships to work, both tables have to be official Excel tables. I've already converted this one. I want to click in a single cell, go up to Insert, click the Table button, or you can use the keyboard, Control-T. Click OK or Enter. Immediately go up to Design, Properties, and we want to name this. I'm going to call it D-Employees and Enter. 
Now we can go to the Data Ribbon tab. And in Data Tools, there it is, the Relationship button. I'm going to click. Then in Manage Relationships, I'm going to click New. Now the way Microsoft named this Table and Related Table sometimes is confusing the first time you use it. Now if you know database terms, foreign and primary key, a primary key means a unique list. And guess what? Lookup tables always have a unique list in the first column. So that's one way to remember. Otherwise, the table is going to be the sales table. And related table, that's the lookup table. So we'll select F sales. And we select employee, lookup table, and employees. The foreign key means that in this table, and we can see it over here, there are many repeats. Primary key means in this employees column, there's a unique list. Now when I click OK, those tables and the relationship are actually added to a behind the scenes location called the data model. I'm going to close this. If you want to go and look at it, you can click this button right here. This opens the Power Pivot for Excel window. And if you want to look at it, you click Diagram View. And if you hover, you can see there's the relationship, a one to many relationship. Now we'll close this. And actually, it doesn't matter where we have our cell when we invoke a pivot table. We go up to Insert, Pivot Table, and there it is, From Data Model. I'll have the new pivot table in G2, click OK. And look at that, two tables in the pivot table field list. Now normally, if we were building a complex data model, which we're not, you use something called a date table. But for our report, we're simply going to drag date down to rows, and it will create the same grouping categories. Actually, if you go look at the sales table in the data model, you'll see all these columns are added to the sales table. I'm going to drag date off, quarter off, years to columns. And from the employees table, I'm going to drag department down to rows, then employee down to department, sales to values, right click, number format, and something like number comma, zero decimals, select the columns, double click, and we're done. Now on the sheet V lookup, we save the best for last. Now the pivot table trick has nothing to do with this V lookup. You could use X lookup or whatever you want. And I'm going to do it old school. I'm looking up a relative cell reference as the lookup value. The table array, first column has the match, second column has the thing I'm returning, F4 to lock it. Comma, I'm trying to get something from the second column, so I got to type a 2. Notice XLOOKUP doesn't require a column index number like VLOOKUP does, comma, and the default for XLOOKUP is exact match. Here we put false or zero. Close parentheses. And since this isn't a spelled array, I have to enter it, copy it down, go to the last cell, hit F2 to verify. That's looking good. Now here's what's different about what we're going to do here. I'm going to get month from this column, employee from this column. But when I build the pivot table, I'm going to drag department to the filter area. Then there's a button I can click to create a separate report on each sheet. And not only will it create the reports, it'll add the sheets and name them with the department name. Let's click in a single cell, Alt-NVT. I'm going to start this pivot table on this existing sheet. Click OK. Drag date down to rows. That groups it. Get rid of dates and quarters, years over to columns. I want employee below month. Right click, expand entire field. Drag sales down to values. Right click, number formatting. We'll add some number formatting, click OK. Highlight the columns, double click between any one. And then now, department we're going to drag to filter. Now if I were to come up here and select accounting, click OK, there's the accounting report. But what we're going to do is we're going to leave it all, which is required. We go up to pivot table, analyze, over to pivot tables, option drop down, 
show report filter pages. We only have one field in our filter, but when we select it and click OK, watch what happens down here. Click OK. And just like that, I have a separate report on each sheet. Now I do have to come up and change the column width. So I'll select the columns and double click. But there it is. That's the employee by month for the accounting department. Over here, that's the employee by month for finance. There's human resources, marketing, and even operations. All right, so in this video, we saw three different methods to create a monthly employee and department sales report. We saw how to add the VLOOKUP, the old school method, and then use show report filter pages. We saw how to use the relationship feature, which by the way, when you add something to the data model, you cannot use show report filter pages. And we saw XLOOKUP and a spill dynamic array formula and a pivot table. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.